Take my hand, no hesitating When you're just so tired of trying All alone you feel like hiding Together we'll keep fighting There's no stopping doing well it's uh saturday night uh january 16th uh if you notice i took down the uh uh christmas decorations i just left a little in some countries they call them fairy lights i left them up but i put up nice white lights for a nice uh feeling uh hope it's more uh personal uh comfy and I left the lights up. So I hope all is well with everybody. Um, it was getting kind of cold tonight. Uh, I ran out to the store. It's a little nippy outside, and uh, but otherwise the weather was okay today. So I hope all is doing well. And it's time for... Okay, and just as a reminder, my new time is 7 p.m. on Saturdays, but what I do, I repeat this show next Saturday at 10 a.m. I originally started at 10 a.m. I, I got some good feedback, um, but as for myself, because Saturday is one of the busiest days in real estate, I'm usually preparing to show homes 
um, making sure homes are available to show. So Saturday is a busy day. This way, I'm not rushed. I could t I could put together a nice show, hopefully a nice show, and uh, and then in the early evening time, uh, do a brand new one. So 7 p.m. is a brand new one. 10 a.m. is the repeat of last week's live stream. Okay. So actually, my producer Leonard Patapkin is back from um, the old country. He was there for the holidays, and hope everything went well with your holidays. And I see it looks like you're in uh, Phoebus, in lovely downtown Phoebus of Hampton. Is that correct? Yes, Chris. Thank you very much. I had a wonderful holiday back in the old country. I am now in the Phoebus area of Hampton on Mallory and Mellon in front of the new restaurant, The Farmer's Wife. They just opened up and it looks beautiful inside and their menu is exquisite. There are also new and upcoming restaurants and a brewery opening up in Phoebus which we will cover in future live streams. Um, and it's true, there's a lot of things happening in Phoebus. I like Phoebus a lot. One of the biggest things there is the, um, the American Theater. And I've seen concerts there ranging from the Vienna Boys Choir to jazz musicians, to classical musicians, to plays, to small orchestras. Um, I haven't been there for the T Tibetan monks, um, but it's very eclectic. It's a little bit for everything. All right. Blue glass, uh, bluegrass music is there. Kevin Bacon, I believe it's with his brother. He has a bluegrass band and he played there. So a lot's happening there. And uh, a lot of new shops and restaurants are there. And um, there's a nice new winery called the Foxtail Winery where you go in there, have some wine, have some, and I hope I say correct, the chachuteri. I, I got to see the word. I should have wrote it down. Chachuteri but it's usually a, a wooden board with different cheeses and different hams from prosciutto to slobbies. And it's nice. It's nice. And uh, so that's happening there. That's been very crowded, actually, every time I drive by. But the Baker's Wife is brand new. They have a very exquisite menu. You always could tell it's a, it's a fine restaurant when they have a very small menu. They don't have a big menu. So they make their specials that they – uh, do very, very well, and um, I will be going there soon with the missus, okay? Um, and other things that are open up there, I'm actually going to write about it on my blog, Real Estate with Mr. G dot blog, and I've taken some pictures, and I, I, I want the best for that area. Um, this brand new apartments across the street on Mellon Street, that Phoebus area is going to be hopping, and they actually need more businesses there, as in the sense of stores, as for restaurants. They're going to need it there, so I'm looking forward to that. So that's what's happening locally. <clears throat> and again, I'll write some articles on my blog about that, what's developing, what I've heard, you know, what's the, uh, the word on the street, and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, but today we're actually going to talk about, and let me put my caption up here, um, and here we are, why pre-approval is key in 2021. Now, it's always important to be, first I'm going to say pre-qualified, um, when you get ready to look at homes. Now, what's really the difference between pre-approval and pre-qualified? Pre-qualified is when you've called up the loan officer that I recommended for you, unless you have your own loan officer, and you say, I'm, I want to buy a house. I want to see how much I could be approved for. And if I can be approved, and they will run your credit score. They'll ask you particular questions about your income. 
okay? And some people have more than one source of income. Uh, some people have investment properties and income coming in from rentals. They might have uh, alimony coming in, child support, whatever, okay? And that's all taken into account. So based upon your income, your credit score, and basically they would like to know how much you would have in savings because they could then say, well, we'll have to go with, first of all, we'll either have to go with FHA or Fannie Mae, or if you're a military or former military, you could go with a VA loan, which is 100% financing. So they find this out uh, front, this is your initial conversation they run and they say, okay, based upon the information you gave me, I could pre-qualify you. And it could be, you know, up to 150,000, it could be up to 250,000, whatever. And now they're able to put together a pre-qualification letter. Now, what's the difference between that and being pre-approved? Well, when you go into the mortgage loan officer's office and you say well here's my bank statements let's say the last six months if that's what they asked for here's two years of income statements all right is my w his twos or pay stubs whatever whatever i need to show to verify that amount i said over the phone okay and now you have your concrete evidence of your income and now there's really no question now that strengthens the deal now most loan officers will say we can't send it to underwriting until we have a contract some will be able to run it through underwriting uh, depending on the size of their company uh, what their policy is and you might have the question and I actually should put it, have put these up here. There's so many things to add after you prepare for for a, uh, a segment like this. But um, the underwriter will now take all your information and look deep into it. They'll dot the I's, they'll cross the T's. If there's anything questionable on the credit report, they will need explanations. Um, for instance, if uh, your credit was dinged because of medical bills, and a lot of times that's what it is, and you could write up you have a payment plan with the hospital, um, they may ask for proof, but they will go now the extra nine yards to see, uh, to make sure everything is correct and everything matches up. So yeah, the underwriter is almost like a, like a detective and going there and looking at everything very, very closely, okay? And basically, uh, once you have a ratified contract, and now uh, the appraiser goes out, and once the appraiser goes in, and we see the amount, everything then goes to the underwriter, and that's when they check everything in full. But some companies, will be able to run that um, or, or, or would be able to send your application down to the underwriters before um, you have a ratified contract, okay? It depends on the company. I have some companies that I work with, they can't do it. Some will be able to run it by underwriting, all right? So, but nonetheless, you definitely have to be at least number one pre-qualified when you're looking for homes, okay? Now, actually, uh, before I go more deep into the matter, I did want to show as an introduction a little video. It's only, I think it's under a minute, but it kind of puts everything in a nutshell and we'll dive into this deeper, okay?
Now, um, let's take the key points of that video and why is it key to be pre-approved at first? Well, number one, this high competition. And if you've been watching my live streams, um, I've repeated so many times that there is little housing inventory right now and many buyers. And the buyers in the market right now, they're not testing the market, you know, they're not so sure. They're, they're, they, want to, they want a house, all right? And they've been pre-qualified and, they, and they're strong buyers, all right? But there's a lot of buyers and a little inventory. So what's happening, if the house is priced correctly, and I've said this so many times, that's the key to it. Uh, the houses that are getting offers on the first day on the market, and many times it's multiple offers, it's priced correctly, all right? It's not overpriced, which is something that's happening right now with, with sellers. They're getting a little too, you know, all right, I got the upper hand here, so uh, I'm going to you know go really high, really high. But the thing is that house has to to appraise at that very high amount, and sometimes that doesn't always happen. So to have a professional like myself do a CMA for you or comparative market analysis to price that correctly will be most helpful. But on the buyer's side, there's a lot of competition out there, and there are houses that are going into contract within 24 to 48 hours with multiple offers at time. So you have to go in there prepared. You can't go in there, you know, willy nilly. You have to be prepared. And how do we do that? Well, preparation, buy preparation to get pre-approved as soon as possible. And again, it could be that first stage of pre-qualification um, because the, the seller and the listing agent of that property will accept a pre-qualified letter because they know with most banks, most mortgage companies that they need a ratified contract before it goes to underwriters. And that's really when the, the metal hits the pedal, okay, at that point. So get it pre-approved as soon as possible. Don't wait. Don't wait till you see that perfect house, okay? And I have a lot of leads right now. And the first uh, task they have to do after they find a very good real estate agent like myself, they have to get pre-qualified. But they don't. They don't. They have visions of buying a new home, but that pre-qualification is so important. Just in case, all right, you have some obstacles, okay? You want to know your price range, and you want to get an idea, you know, okay, say, you know, I could find a house, the type of house I want is a three-bedroom, in Hampton, and that runs, let's say, from two to two fifty. You know, I, I could possibly find a nice one for two hundred, but one that's ready to be moved in, that's newly updated, I'll probably have to go to two fifty. And your loan officer could give you an estimate of the cost of what it would be between getting a house for two hundred thousand, as opposed to getting to a house for two hundred fifty thousand. So you want to know that as well. But most important, right below here, get on top of obstacles. Because um, you may think your credit is in good condition, but the loan officer sees some issues there. And some things that can be corrected, maybe in a month's time, maybe in a three months' time. I just had someone go for pre-qualification. They need to work on it a little bit. But which is, it's fine because their lease is not up to the end of the year and they're going to start looking around September, October. So they have enough time to clear up some issues on their credit report 
And that's the right way to go about it. Don't wait uh, until you you see that dream house that you want because there's a chance that uh, there's something that has to be worked out. Unless you know, unless you know for sure that you have no problems with your credit, right? But I found out in all these years of doing real estate, the ones that think they know how good their credit is, it's not that good. And once you think their credit is bad, it's actually pretty good. Now that's not all the time, but I've I've found that that out that uh, you know opposites out. Uh, that's how it happens. All right, but let a professional look at your credit report and get on top of those obstacles right now. Okay, so you have time to work on it. And again, I've worked with people who cleared it up with recommendations from the loan officer within two to three months. I've had some people who needed about six months. But once you have a plan, you could chart it out, and now you're on the road to purchasing a house. Okay? Now, let's get rid of this graphic here, and let me bring up um, my text for today. And if I hit this here, and there it is. And we're going to say the do's and don'ts after applying for a mortgage. Now you've been uh, pre-qualified, got all your paperwork in, you've been pre-approved. The the uh, I was going to say the undertaker, the underwriter, <laughs> uh, let's say, had a, a look at it, and they said, no, this, this is in pretty good shape. But then there are some things that you want to avoid. And the reason why you want to avoid some things is because the underwriter may, and then most times, will check your credit right before closing. Okay? So if you did something like, and let's scroll this down. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to number two first because this, this is the big issue, the biggest problem. Number two don't make any large purchases like a new car or furniture for your new home. New debt comes with new monthly obligations. New obligations create new qualifications. People with new debt have higher debt to income ratios. Higher ratios make for riskier loans. And then sometimes qualified borrowers no longer qualify. And this happens. I don't want to say a whole lot, but it does happen where people, and it might not be a car. They might say, okay, now let's let's buy furniture for our new home. Yay, yay, yay. And they put it on credit, and now their debt to income goes up higher, and it's very possible that the loan will be den denied right before closing. Okay. Let's look at number one. Don't deposit cash into your bank accounts before speaking with your bank or lender. Lenders need to source your money, and cash is not easily traceable. Before you deposit any amount of cash into your accounts, discuss the proper way to document your transaction with your loan officer. Now, you might say, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that, uh, Mr. G? Well, what's wrong with that is that it may seem that, uh, and it could be a family member, they're trying to help you. You really perhaps maybe can't do the down payment on your own. You might have difficulties with the monthly payments. So uh, a parent, an uncle, a brother or sister is making cash deposits. But if they see these cash deposits coming in and it's not documented, and it could be completely innocent. They're going to question that. And if it is money coming from, you know, family members, they might say, well, can this person really afford the mortgage? Now, just a, a sub note to that, okay, is that with some loans, you're able to get gift funds for the down payment, all right? So someone can gift you the money 
and it could be you know three percent of the of the loan it could be two percent whatever but there has to be a letter with that there has to be a gift letter and you say well why well because the bank has to make sure that this is not new debt that you're uh, uh, acquiring right because again that's going to raise your debt to income ratios someone gives you five thousand dollars for a down payment uh they could see that without the gift letter as a line of credit you know a loan that you have to pay back so there has to be a gift letter saying that uh this does not have to be paid back all right it's a gift so with that letter they cannot legally go after you for that money it's a gift to you all right so that in in that way it could be done but it has to be documented this is not a big thing this happens a lot don't co-sign other loans for anyone and you know your your daughter your son maybe buying a new car and they really need it for school they need it for work in that period of time when you're waiting to close don't do it then okay because again even though you're co-signing and the other person is the main applicant on that car loan um, if they do not make payments on it that bank or that finance comp company could go directly with you without any type of uh, letters or or suing the the, the first uh, applicant on it they could go right to you and ask there's no waiting period so you're actually obligated to pay that loan okay so you don't want to increase your your debt to income and actually if you want to help somebody especially if it's a family member, it might be easy just to, and this is outside of buying a house, is to give them cash to help them to easily afford it. Then putting your uh, name on a uh, loan, in this example, being a cosigner. Don't change bank accounts, all right, because the lenders want to track your assets, okay, you know, there's so many things that could happen that could be could be underhanded by doing this and it could be very simple and very innocent but don't change bank accounts during this time period and again number five don't apply for new credit um, don't take any more out any more credit cards during this time period and don't close any credit accounts as well and I know this sounds weird because it's really hard to to figure out but um you would think closing some credit lines if you have quite a few credit cards might be a good thing but it sends a message to uh in this case the the bank that's uh going to give you a mortgage that maybe uh, you're having financial difficulties so you have to close these out um it's it's tricky and and when you think you're doing a good thing you're not doing a good thing okay all right and actually this uh is a little graphic here and i don't know if you could see it all the way and it's uh I'll, i put it on my blog but it's a little infographic and again it shows you here don't change bank accounts don't apply for new credit cards don't make any large purchases and by the way even with the large purchases even with cash don't do that because with some loans you have to be like one percent vested into the house so uh, if a house is a hundred thousand dollars they want to make sure you have a thousand dollars in the bank um, so if if buying things on cash is going to lower that uh that's not good either 
And we talked about don't deposit cash into your bank accounts before speaking to your bank lender. And this one, do not co-sign other loans for anyone during that time period. These are the two biggies, the co-signing, because you find out that uh, a nice parent co-signed a car for their son or daughter. And this is the other big thing. Um, don't many make any large purchases. Most of the time, it's on credit. Taking out a car loan or a, uh, a store loan where you're buying your furniture. Hold off on that. Very important. Okay? So, okay, I think I get rid of all of that. Let me see. I got to get rid of this. I shouldn't have done that. Here I am. Okay. So, those are the, the big things. And again, to recap, it's a very competitive market. Um, get pre qualified, pre approved now before you start that search. It'll go a lot smoother. Believe me, I've been in this business. Huh. Well, actually, in 2023, I'll be in this business 30 years. Can you imagine that? This this young looking face. Okay, and uh, <laughs> but um, it's it's best to be to get that pre qualification now. If you have some any, any obstacles, get that out of the way now. Work on that now. All right. Okay. Remember, it's a seller's market. There's uh, uh, you know, more buyers in the market than there is supply. When demand is strong and supply is low, what happens to price? It's a very basic economic principle. The price goes up. Now, I have to say, uh, since the beginning of the year, I've seen more houses go on the market from my buyers. So as I've discussed in other live stream videos, as long as we get this COVID-19 under control, um, I believe uh, this is going to be a stellar year for a uh, real estate market because now if we get it under control and restaurants begin to open up again and retail stores begin to open up again and people start traveling and people start going to concerts that's going to bring back these workers who are out of work, who are who are our next home buyers. So it'll be a great year if uh, we get control control of this coronavirus and we get out another stimulus package. Okay, all right. So we've been on for about a half hour, and um, that's all we will talk about today. But I hear my. Uh, my producer, Leonard Patapkin, talking to me right now. Let's see what he wants. Chris, Chris, great news. We have a celebrity in the audience. According to his mom, Carol Womack, he was discovered by Bob Smith, Buffalo Bob of the long-running and famous Howdy Doody show while on vacation in New Orleans. He stole a cherry out of Bob's drink and was rewarded with a five-year contract. Through the Howdy Doody show's exposure, he became a popular icon and began to make numerous other media appearances. Ladies and gentlemen, Zippy the Chimp. Well, Zippy looks good. I, you know, I've seen him on at Sullivan years ago. I didn't know he was still around, but evidently uh, Monkey's lives are pretty long. But uh, it was good seeing him again. So, uh, again, another famous celebrity in our audience. So it's going to be a tough week coming up. Remember, we're one nation. Let's work out all our problems by talking, by negotiating, okay? Uh, wear your mask. Keep your distance. Wash your hands and be safe, okay? And I'll see you next week on Real Estate with Mr. G.